In this lesson, we'll cover the different types of sentences in the English language. In English, we can use four different types of sentences. The declarative sentence, which is known as a statement. The interrogative sentence, which is a question. The imperative sentence, which is a command. And the exclamative sentence, which is an exclamation. Now for the declarative sentence, okay, this is just a statement. It is just going to tell information or make some type of statement. The punctuation mark we use is a period. So you can see here we have some different ways we will structure this type of sentence. If it is a positive sentence, we just follow this structure, the subject followed by the verb. So, I like apples. He likes apples. Okay, very simple, just subject verb. And you'll notice it's ended with a period, okay? Or if you're studying British English, full stop. The negative version, okay, changes a little bit, but not too difficult. We have the subject followed by the auxiliary verb to do, then the word not, then our verb. So I do not like apples, or he does not like apples, right? And this verb does or do will change depending on our subject or the tense of the verb. Okay, this could be past tense. He did not like apples. Now for interrogative sentence, this is going to be a question type sentence. It is going to ask for information or ask for some response. The punctuation mark is a question mark. And many times you will use these question words to make your question. So who, what, when, why, where, or how. And for the structure, okay, we have the positive structure here. It's going to follow two different ways. Okay, you can start with the auxiliary verb only first, then the subject, and then the verb. Okay, and with question words, or sorry, with questions, your auxiliary verb can be to do or to have. Okay? And the other positive structure will be you add a question word before the auxiliary verb. So we can see our examples here. Okay? Do you like apples? Or do is the auxiliary verb. Then you have the subject, you, and do you like apples, right? The verb. Or why do you like apples? So what is the difference between this structure and this structure. Well, if you start with only the auxiliary verb, okay, do you like apples? Or have you eaten apples? It, just starting with the auxiliary verb, you're asking for a yes or no response. But if you add this question word, like why, then you're asking for more information. Okay, so why do you like apples? Now I'm expecting a full explanation about why you like apples. For the negative version, we are going to switch the structure a little bit. It's going to be the auxiliary verb, okay, then the subject, then you enter the word not, and then the verb, okay? So auxiliary verb, subject, not, and then the verb. And then we also have the version where we add the question word at the beginning. So here is our example. Did you not like the apples? Okay, and now if you want to contract did and not, you'll see that this not comes forward. Okay, so didn't you like apples? Or why does he not like apples? And again, the not comes forward to contract with does. So why doesn't he like apples? The third type of sentence is the imperative sentence. This is a command, right? This is a sentence that gives an instruction that must be done. Okay? The punctuation mark for this would be period or exclamation mark. 
and usually there's no subject okay you don't there can be but you don't have to have a subject so in our positive form it's just the verb the base verb right so here look right you're telling them to look and these commands the subject is obviously implied right maybe you're looking at the person talking to them already so you can just say look right or we can add extra information look at the board and if you want to include the subject you can john look okay so these are commands imperative sentences the negative form you're going to have an auxiliary verb do or have then not and then the verb okay so do not look or don't look do not look at the board or don't look at the board and again if you want to include the subject you can john do not look at the board okay or john do not look and the last type of sentence is this exclamative sentence or exclamation these types of sentences they're going to express strong emotion okay? if you're angry about something or very excited or some type of surprise and the punctuation mark will be an exclamation mark so here we have the structure what okay, the word what plus some adjective if you want you don't have to then noun then the subject and then the verb okay so our example is what a juicy apple i'm eating okay, what a juicy apple i'm eating now, you don't have to have subject in here. You can say, what a juicy apple that was, okay? But if you want to include the subject, you can. What a juicy apple I'm eating, okay? Or you can use the word how, plus adjective and adverb, and then subject and verb. So, how exciting the game was, okay? How exciting that game was. You can change and vary it a little bit, but overall, these are the general structures for the exclamative sentence. In this lesson, we're going to cover the four sentence structures. Okay, so the main structures that you can make with a sentence. Before we do that, you need to know what is the difference between an independent clause and a dependent clause? The independent clause is a sentence that has a subject, okay, and a verb, and expresses a complete thought. So an independent clause has to have two things, subject and a verb, and express a complete thought. The dependent clause, okay, the dependent clause, it will have a subject and verb, but it does not express a clear thought. Okay, so this is the difference. One expresses a complete thought, the other one does not. So here we have two examples. The cat is home. Okay, this is a complete thought. So this is an independent clause. The other one, when the cat is home, okay, that is dependent. That sentence doesn't sound finished. It is not a clear, complete thought. So these are what we're talking about when we talk about independent and dependent clause. So the first sentence structure that we're going to look at is just a sentence structure with a full, single, independent clause. Okay, so this is the most simple type of sentence. It's just a single independent clause and you can see in our example i like apples right very easy simple sentence i don't think too many students or english learners have trouble with this sentence the second type okay, is called a compound sentence so here this structure is a compound sentence now the structure for a compound sentence is going to be an independent clause plus a coordinating conjunction and then another independent clause okay now there are some things you need to take note of one is this comma 
Okay, when you join two independent clauses, you must put a comma before the coordinating conjunction that joins the clauses. Now, if you haven't taken our grammar course and you don't know what a coordinating conjunction is, well, this is a quick way to remember them. A coordinating conjunction is a word, as we said, that links two independent clauses. And these are the main coordinating conjunctions, okay, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. And you will always learn this word here, fanboys, to remember the conjunctions, right? The first letter of each of these conjunctions. Now let's look at these examples. I like apples, but John likes pears, okay? Here, we used the comma, okay, and the coordinating conjunction. Now, there is another way to join two independent clauses, and that is to use a semicolon, okay? This is to use a semicolon. So, I like apples, John likes pears. Now, if you've taken our punctuation course, you'll know that after the semicolon, you don't capitalize the word, but this is a name, so we did have to capitalize this J, okay? But again, we are using this semicolon without a conjunction to join these two independent clauses, or we use a comma with a coordinating conjunction, okay? So this is a compound sentence. Now we are getting to the more advanced structure, and this one is complex sentences, okay? So this is the third type we're talking about. Now, a complex, sorry, a complex sentence is going to be an independent clause followed by a subordinating conjunction and then a dependent clause, okay? So this subordinating conjunction and dependent clause are going to come together. Okay, so it's like one unit. That's why I have these parentheses. We can take this unit, this subordinating conjunction and dependent clause, and put it at the beginning of the sentence, followed by the independent clause. Okay, so let's look at what is different about these two versions. Well, you'll see in the first version, we have no commas. All right, so with subordinating conjunction, we're not using a comma first, as we did in the other example. But if we move this unit, subordinating conjunction plus dependent clause, to the front, then we must put a comma before we add the independent clause. Now, here, I have a long list of words. Okay? I just want to show you the many, many ways we can use subordinating conjunctions, right? These are all subordinating conjunctions. So there are many ways to join an independent clause with a dependent clause. And we have a few examples here, just so you can see. I like apples, although John likes pears. Now, I like apples is my independent clause, although is my subordinating conjunction, and John likes pears with although, right, would be this dependent clause and subordinating conjunction, okay? So this is the first structure of complex sentence. Now if we move to our second structure, we have this version here. Although John likes pears, I like apples. So now we have this unit right here, the subordinating conjunction with the dependent clause, but because it's in front, we need this comma, and then we have the independent clause. Okay, now our last structure, the most advanced and hardest structure to maybe wrap your mind around, is the compound complex sentence. So here we are combining everything we learned to make a very advanced sentence. And you can see there are three different structures. That's just because there's three possibilities with the way you can move the independent clauses and dependent clauses. But basically, a compound complex sentence is when 
you are joining two independent clauses and a dependent clause. Okay, so here we have actually three parts to the sentence. So let's look at each structure. Here we have independent clause plus subordinating conjunction and dependent clause. And then we're adding another independent clause, but to do that, we have to add a coordinating conjunction. So remember, before a coordinating conjunction, we always have a comma. So don't forget where your commas should be. Here, we have subordinating conjunction plus dependent clause. Okay, we move this to the front. Remember, when dependent clause is in the front, we need a comma. Okay, then we have our first independent clause and our second independent clause joined with a coordinating conjunction. So we also need a comma here. Then the third structure is independent clause first, joined with the second independent clause through the coordinating conjunction. So we need a comma in front of it. And then we have the subordinating conjunction to join the dependent clause at the end. So let's look at these three examples to see the three structures in use. The first one, I like apples, although John likes pears, but we are still friends. Okay, so I like apples, independent clause, although, subordinating conjunction, John likes pears, or although John likes pears, is our dependent clause. Okay, we have a comma here because we have but, our coordinating conjunction, we are still friends, which is our independent clause. Then the second structure, although John likes pears, I like apples but we are still friends, okay? So here we have the subordinating conjunction and dependent clause unit in front. We have a comma because we're joining the independent clause after that. And then we have but here, so we need a comma before and our second independent clause. And the third structure, we are still friends, but I like apples while John likes pears. Okay, so now here we have independent clause, we are still friends, joined to another independent clause, I like apples, with conjunction, coordinating conjunction and comma, and then subordinating conjunction while, followed by dependent clause, okay, while John likes pairs. So these are the three ways to write a compound complex sentence.